Hi, Algebra 1. This is the homework. Uh, this is going to be page 113, 114. And I just assigned the um, odds, but I'm going to actually do all of them. So fill uh, these in as you go along. So remember, the first thing I said to do is make sure you get all these, these points. Okay, anytime you change directions, Get all these points, including where it crosses the x-axis and where it crosses the y-axis. Two, three, four. So that's zero, negative four. Make sure you understand where these points came from and you understand how to get them. Okay, so the domain are the x values. So the domain is the furthest left to the furthest right. And we use square brackets on these because there are points. The range are the y values. So you look for your lowest y value and your highest y value. Okay, the lowest point down here and the highest point on the graph. And then we're going to go from bottom to top. And I'm just using the y values. What is the maximum value? The maximum value is going to be this. So it's just 3. It's just the y value of the bit top value. The lowest value is going to be negative 4. It's the lowest value of our y values of our points. Where is this graph increasing? So I'm going to highlight this. Increasing. So it's increasing right here. And it's also increasing right there. So being though those are both connected, you can do them together. So you can use your x values to say how they're going to happen. And we'll do that in aqua. Um, so it's going from 0 here to 4 here. Number 6, where is it decreasing? So let's highlight a little bit more. So it's decreasing right here. That's the de decreasing. So let's find another color. I'll do that purple. So it's decreasing from here to here. So from negative 3 to 0. And the reason these are parentheses is those dots were turning points on our graph. Where is our graph constant? Our graph is going to be constant right here. Okay. So it's constant from here. Oops. From here to here. So from negative 5 to negative 3, it was constant. Where is the graph positive? So I have to do, I'm going to do a crayon. I'm going to do a kind of a brown color. So this is going to be the whole positive region up here. Okay? So where it's positive, it's going to be positive from using the x value from here to here. So from negative 5 to 2, and they're both parentheses, and then from here to here and then 1 to 4. Let's do a different color crayon. Where is it negative? Negative means it's below. So th this region down here is the negative region. So it's going to be negative from here to here. So from negative 2 to 1. And where is our function 0? It's 0 in two locations, here and here. So at negative 2 and at 1. Okay. It's just those x values. That's where it would be 0. Make sure you ask me if you have any questions. You can just raise your hand. I'll come over and help you. OK, so um, our independent are our x values. So this is going to be time. Our dependent are our y values, which is depth. What is the domain? OK, so let's list these points. So that point is 0, 24. This point right here is 5, 12. This point right here is going to be 8, 16. This point right here is like 11.5, comma, uh, 12, I'd say. And then this point right here is 12, comma, 0. Okay, so with the domain, remember the domain is going to deal with the x values. Furthest left to furthest right. 
So it's going to go square bracket from 0 to 12 because they're both points. Actually, I think this is an open dot down here. So I'm going to change this to a soft bracket because it's an open dot. If you get mess up that on the test, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Our range, we're going to look at our lowest y value and our highest y value. And we go from bottom to top. Okay, that was also an open dot, so it's going to be a 0 here up to 24 square bracket. But again, if you mess those up, don't panic. It's not a big deal. Okay. What is the maximum value? So this, remember, this is the biggest y value. So that's going to be the 24. Our minimum value is going to be this lowest point. So that's going to be 0. So this means that um, uh, when the pool is full, when the pool is full, when the pool is empty, okay? Number 16, let's see where this is increasing. It's increasing right here. It's the only place it's increasing. So I'm going to use this to this. So from 5 to 8, and I use the x values to describe that. Where are we decreasing? We're decreasing here. We're decreasing here, and we're also decreasing here. So using the x value 0 to 5, this x value and this x value, and then you can just continue this from 8 to 12. Okay. And again, I realize I only had you do the odds, but make sure you had filled out the evens. <clears throat> All right, so f, that goes, this is our f equation. So I'm going to plug negative 2 in for the x value and do the math. Uh, this is going to give me 6 plus 4, which is 10. This yields me the point negative 2 comma 10, because I plugged negative 2 in. Number 19, I'm going to use, again, this equation. So I get 3, negative 3 times negative 1 plus 4, which is going to be 3 plus 4, which is 7. That gives me the point negative 1 comma 7. This, I'm going to use the f value again. So negative 3 times 0 plus 4. That's 0 plus 4, which gives me 4, which yields me the point 0 comma 4. I'm going to use my f equation again, so negative 3 times 1 plus 4, so that's negative 3 plus 4, which is 1, that gives me the point 1 comma 1. Again, I'm using my f graph, so I'm going to have negative 3 times 2 plus 4, that's negative 6 plus 4, that's negative 2, so that gives me 2 comma negative 2. Now I'm going to use my g, my g graph, okay? So I have 2 thirds times negative 6 plus or minus 4. So that's going to be 12 over 3. So that's going to be negative 4 minus 4, which is negative 8. This gives me the point negative 6 comma negative 8. I'm going to plug negative 3 in now. So I get 2 thirds times negative 3 minus 4. That's going to give me negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6. That gives me the point negative 3 comma negative 6. Plug 0 in. So I get 2 thirds times 0 minus 4. So that answer is just negative 4. Okay, so that gives me a point 0 comma negative 4. I'm going to get G graph still. I'm going to plug 3 in. So that's going to give me 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. So 3 comma negative 2. I'm going to plug 6 in. So 2 thirds times 6 minus 4. So that's 12 over 3 which is 4. 4 minus 4, it gives me 0, so that gives me 6 comma 0. Okay? And the last one, I'm going to use my h graph. h graph goes with that. So I have negative, negative 2 squared minus 2, so that's going to be negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6. It gives me a point negative 2 comma negative 6. Plug negative 1 in. Notice the negative outside doesn't get affected by squaring. So that's going to be negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. That gives me a point negative 1, comma, negative 3. Plug 0 in, negative 0 squared minus 2 just gives me an answer of negative 2. So that's 0, comma, negative 2. Plug 1 in, negative 1 squared minus 2. That's negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. That gives me a point 1, comma, negative 3. Then plug 2 in, negative 2 squared minus 2. So that's going to give me 2 squared is 4, so that's negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6, so 2 comma negative 6. I went kind of quickly, so if you might want to pause that a little bit.
Okay, as we move down a little bit, now it's going to say, hey, I want that. Okay, so I'm going to use my first equation up above. I'll use the red one up above. So I have 22. 22 is equal to negative 3x plus 4. Okay, solve that. Subtract 4, so that's 18 equals negative 3x. Divide each side by negative 3, so x equals negative 6. So my point is negative 6 comma 22. Look where the negative 6 and then 22 came from. This one I'm going to use my g graph, which was blue. So 4 is going to be equal to 2 thirds x minus 4. Add 4 to both sides. Multiply both sides by 3, divide by 2. So I'm going to get 12, comma 4. Again, notice where those come from. Uh, we can skip this one. Don't worry about that one. Um, all we're doing from above, so let's do our red one. So I have a point, negative 2, 10. So negative 2, 10 is up here. Negative 1, 7, negative 1, 7, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 4. Oops, is that right? I made a mistake. Oh, all right, 0, 4. Oh, I made a mistake. This one should have been over here. And then 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, comma 1. And 2, comma negative 2. So notice made a straight line. Okay, so let's go to our blue ones next. So we have uh, negative 6, negative 8. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 3, 6. Negative 3, negative 6. 5, 6. I'm trying to about there. 0, negative 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 2. So right 3, down 2. And 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 0. And then you can do the same thing with the h at x. The h at x is actually going to form a curved line. Um, let's see what color we do that in. We did it in purple. So negative 2, negative 6. Negative 2, negative 6. Negative 1, negative 3. 0, negative 2, 1, negative 3, 2, comma 6, negative 6. So this one made a kind of a parabola, and that's what it should have done. Okay, so now we're going to go to page 115. Okay, and we're going to skip that one. All right, so this is, we have this cost function here, this cost function, let me clear that out of there, this is our cost function here, okay? So the independent is the x miles, the dependent is your y cost. So you take an Uber, and they make this. So if you live three miles from the destination, so you go 0 0.40 times 3 plus 8, which gives me 1.20 plus 8. So this means your Uber ride would cost you $9.20. If you live 10 miles from the destination, do the same thing. So 0 0.40 times 10 plus 8, which is 4 plus 8. So that gives you $12. It costs you $12 that far. If you had $20, 
So I'm going to do 20. Could I, how far can I go? Okay, so subtract 8 from both sides. So this is going to become a 12 equals 0.40x. Divide each side by 0.40. And you'd use the calculator on this. So you're going to go 12 divided by 0 0.40, which 12 divided by 0 0.40 is, you could go 30 miles. So maybe to the airport, I guess. I don't know. Uh, if you only have $20, what's a reasonable domain? Your domain... I can go. I can spend zero money to twenty dollars. Your range, you could go. If you plug zero into it, it's going to start with eight, and then your maximum with twenty. Your twenty. Let's see. That's going to be the. We have to go point four zero times twenty plus eight. So. So you can go up to 16 miles. That's kind of cool. And what does 0.4 represent in the problem? The rate per mile. What does 8 represent? The cost to pick you up. Okay? That's right. Okay, uh, keywords and writing. A blank value is a value that is used. Okay, in linear problems, often these cases will be two values acting on independent variable to generate a dependent variable. An independent val an x value, or the value that is used, um, a y value. Okay, um, I'm not quite sure what we're supposed to put there, so let's not to worry too much about it. These are where M is, or B is the initial value and M is the recurring value. Okay. Okay, this one says during the last swim meet, Jake dove eight feet away from the starting point and swam at a rate of four feet per second. Okay. So he went four feet per second, he dove in at eight. Okay, so that's basically y, or f at x if we wanted to put that, okay? But the independent variable t in the context of the problem, that is, um, that is rate, or that is distance swam in feet. Okay, what is the dependent? Um, how far the rate of swimming, which is initial value of B, it's 8. What is the recurring value? It's 4. Write the linear function. This was the linear function we had already written it above. Uh, so they could write it as D at T equals 4T plus 8. So I notice I just changed the X to T and the Y to D at T. And how far away from the starting block will it be after 8 seconds? So you go 4 times 8 plus the 8. So that's 32 plus 8. So he's going to be 40 feet away after 8 se seconds of swimming. How long will it take him to be 100 feet away? So you go 100 equals 4t plus 8. Subtract 8, so that's 92 equals 4t. Divide each side by 4, so 92 divided by 4 is 23 seconds. Jake's race will end after two minutes. How many seconds? So two minutes would be 120 seconds. Okay, because uh, one minute equals 60 seconds. So let's see. So we're going to go 120 equals 4t plus 8. Subtract the 8, so that's going to give me 112 equals 4t. And then you go 112 divided by 4. So 28 seconds. All right, let's not worry too much about that. Let's go to the next page. Um, all right, so the domain of this. So we think about down here, 
where is this going to? This is going to the left, it's going to negative infinity. Going down is going to negative infinity. And then as it goes to the right, it ends here. So this is going to be at 3 comma 0. So the domain is going to go from negative infinity to 3. The range is going to go from negative infinity to my highest value there, which looks like 4 in the y direction. f at negative 2. So if I go to negative 2, negative 2 gets to about right there. So that looks like to be negative 1. f at 0 is right there. So that's going to give me an answer of 0 for the y. So this gives me the point negative 2 comma negative 1. This gives me point 0 comma 0. If I plug 3 in, 1, 2, 3, I get to 0. So that's the point 3 comma 0. f at negative 3, negative 3, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, way down here. Gosh, that takes us to what, negative 14? To negative 3 comma negative 14. f at negative 1, go to negative 1, and that goes up to 5. So it gives me a point negative 1 comma 5. f at 1, you go over here and you go right down. It looks like it's at negative 5. There's your answer. Interval that it's increasing. Well, it's increasing here, and it's increasing here. Okay, so that's at like negative 2 comma negative 8. And this is going to give me the point negative 1, comma 5. So it's increasing from negative infinity, because it goes all the way, keeps going, it's an arrow forever, um, up to negative 1. It's also increasing from negative 2 to 3. Where is it decreasing? It's decreasing between these. So you use the x values, negative 1 to negative 2, or negative 1 to positive 2. That's a positive 2. Sorry, I'm getting these wrong. And where is it positive? It's only positive here. So it's positive. That looks like a negative 2. And that's a 0. That's where it's positive. OK. So your homework for tonight, what do we say we do? Page 117 and 118. You might have to use Google Translate for those. But let's have you do the odds. Okay, which is just 1 and 3 and 5. Okay, have a nice day. Make sure you ask me if you have any questions. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.